بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کافی عرصے کے بعد ویڈیو اپلوڈ کر رہا ہوں لیکن وجہ یہ ہے کہ میں ویسی ویڈیو نہیں اپلوڈ کرنا چاہتا کوئی کانٹینٹ ہو کوئی بات ہو کرنے کی تو پھر ویڈیو اپلوڈ کرنا چاہتا ہوں کچھ باتیں دی بھی کرنے کی لیکن موقع نہیں ملا تھوڑا سا لیکن بہرحال ایک چیز میرے پاس ہے جو کہ میں شیئر کرنا چاہ رہا ہوں کافی پلے لسٹ میرے پاس یہاں پہ موجود ہیں جس کے اندر مختلف کور کورسز کمپیوٹر سائنس کے کور کیے گئے ہیں ایک اور کورس میں نے بھی ریسنٹلی ریکارڈ کیا ہے جو کہ کمپیوٹر نیٹ ورکس کے بارے میں ہے وہ کورس انشاءاللہ میں اپلوڈ کروں گا آہستہ آہستہ کر کے پورے سیمسٹر کا کلاس روم کی ریکارڈنگز ہیں پلس سات لیبز ہیں کمپیوٹر نیٹ ورکس کا کورس میں نے تھوڑا سا ریسنٹلی بھی دیکھے ہیں جتنے دیکھے ہیں اس کے اندر اکثر جگہ پہ مجھے یہ مسئلہ ہے کہ جو فاؤنڈیشنل کانسیپٹس ہوتے ہیں وہ کمزور رہ جاتے ہیں کانٹینٹ بہت زیادہ کور کر لیا جاتا ہے لیکن جو سمجھنے کی چیز ہوتی ہے وہ اکثر جگہ پہ رہ جاتی ہے تو اس وجہ سے میرا یہ جو کانٹینٹ میں نے ریکارڈ کیا ہے یہ تھوڑا ہے فل کانٹینٹ جو کمپیوٹر نیٹ ورکس کے ہوتے ہیں وہ کور اس کے اندر نہیں ہوں گے لیکن ہوپ فلی جو فاؤنڈیشن آپ کی ہے وہ مضبوط ہو جائے گی اس کے بعد پھر آپ اگر کوئی ٹوٹوریل دیکھتے ہیں کوئی آرٹیکل دیکھتے ہیں ویڈیوز دیکھتے ہیں بکس دیکھتے ہیں تو انشاءاللہ آپ کو سمجھ آئے گی تو یہ اس کورس کا پرسپیکٹو ہے بہت زیادہ ویڈیوز نہیں ہوں گی تھوڑی سی ویڈیوز ہوں گی اور طریقہ کار یہ ہے کہ ہر ویڈیو میں تھوڑی سی تھیوری ہے اور ساتھ اس کے ایک پریکٹیکل لیب ہے جو کہ اس کو پیکٹ ٹریسر کے اوپر ہے اور کافی ڈیٹیل میں ہم اس کو آ کے لے کے گئے ہیں صرف اس لیے نہیں کہ آپ وہ لیب کریں بس کہ بلکہ اس لیب کے ذریعے سے اپنی تھیوری کو بھی سمجھیں تو اس طریقے سے ہم چلائیں گے جو میری پوری آؤٹ لائن ہے کورسز کی اس کے اندر یہ ایسی جگہ پہ فٹ ہوتا ہے اگر آپ کو نیٹ ورک کا کورس نہیں بھی چاہیے تو پھر بھی یہ کورس آپ کو لینا چاہیے کیونکہ اس کی وجہ سے آپ کی سسٹم ایڈمنسٹریشن آپریٹنگ سسٹمس بہت سارے کانسیپٹ جو ہیں وہ اس کے اندر کور ہوتے ہیں یہ فٹ ہوتا ہے آپ نے اگر انٹروڈکشن ٹو کمپیوٹنگ والی پلے لسٹ نہیں دیکھی ہوئی وہ میری فاؤنڈیشنل پلے لسٹ ہے جو میرے سے کچھ سیکھنا چاہتا ہے اس کو وہ والی پلے لسٹ ضرور پوری لینی چاہیے تھوڑی سی لمبی ہے لیکن بہت زیادہ ضروری ہے اس کے اندر بہت ضروری کانسیپٹ جو ہیں وہ کور کیے گئے ہیں آئی ووڈ ہائیلی ریکمینڈ کہ اس کو پلیز جا کے ضرور دیکھیے اگر آپ انڈر گریڈ میں ہیں بے شک سینئر ہوں وہ فرسٹ سیمسٹر کا کورس ہے لیکن وہ اگر آپ سینئر لیول پہ ہیں گریجویٹ ہونے والے ہیں وہ چکے ہیں پھر بھی ان شاء اس سے فائدہ ہوگا ضرور اس کو دیکھیے گا تو یہ فٹ ہوتی ہے آپ کے آپریٹنگ سسٹمس کے کورس سے پیچھے یا آپریٹنگ سسٹمس کے کورس کے پیرل میں تو آپ لوگوں نے اگین اگر انٹروڈکشن ٹو کمپیوٹنگ والی پلے لسٹ دیکھی ہو تو اس کے اندر ہم نے ایک یوز کیس کی تھی کہ اگر آپ اپنے فرنٹ اینڈ سے کوئی ویب سائٹ کے اوپر کوئی ٹیکس باکس فل کرتے ہیں جس کے اندر آٹو کمپلیٹ ہے تو اس کے اندر آپ کو تمام کانٹیکٹس جو ہیں آپ کے نظر آتے ہیں وہ کے والے کانٹیکٹس والی پلے لسٹ ہے جنہوں نے دیکھ لیجیے ضرور اس سے بڑا اچھا کمپیوٹر سائنس کا پرسپیکٹو پتہ چلتا ہے میں لنک کر دوں گا اوپر انشاءاللہ تو اس کے اندر ہم نے کہا تھا کہ آپ کے جو پیکٹ ہے وہ ان انفارمیشن کا پیکٹ انفارمیشن وہ سٹارٹ ہوتی ہے ایک جگہ سے اور وہ دوسرے سٹی پہ جو آپ کا سرور پڑا ہے وہاں تک کیسے جاتی ہے اور واپس کیسے آتی ہے تو یہ جو راستہ ہے یہ نیٹ ورک کے کورس کا کام ہے جس کے اندر ہم نے اس کے اوپر بات کی ہے تو ان شاء اللہ نیٹ ورک کے کورس کی میں ویڈیوز اپلوڈ کروں گا یہ پہلی ویڈیو ابھی اپلوڈ کر رہا ہوں اس کے ساتھ ساتھ آہستہ آہستہ میں ساری فردر جو کورس ہے وہ بھی اپلوڈ کر دوں گا جو پریکٹیکلز ہیں وہ جس طریقے سے لیب میں بتائے گئے ہیں وہ ضرور ساتھ کریں صرف ویڈیو دیکھنے سے کام نہیں بنے گا اس کو ساتھ کریں ایک مسئلہ تھوڑا سا یہ ہے کہ یہ اردو میں نہیں ہے ہے انگلش کے ریکارڈنگ لیکن میری انگلش کو ایسی کو بڑی اچھی نہیں ہے تو وہ انگلش ان شاء اللہ آپ کو سمجھ آئے گی اگر آپ ابھی تک میرا کانٹینٹ پیچھے کا دیکھتے رہے ہیں تو میرے جو ڈلیوری کا سٹائل ہے تقریباً وہی ہے ان شاء اللہ چھوٹی ویڈیوز ہیں اتنی لمبی بھی نہیں ہیں تو ان شاء اللہ سے فائدہ ہوگا میں اس ویڈیو کو یہاں پہ جو اردو میں انٹروڈکشن ہے اس کو ختم کر رہا ہوں اور باقی کا ان شاء اللہ کورس کی ویڈیو آگے میں یہاں پہ چلا رہا ہوں بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سو وی آر اسٹارٹنگ ود دی نیٹ ورکس کورس اینڈ دس لائک آئی ٹولڈ یو بفور Uh, this is a beginner level course. This is our first formal class. We are going to start off with just the basic concepts, right? These concepts are going to be very familiar to you. Uh, in some of these concepts, they're going to be more familiar to you than to me, right? Because they're going to talk about uh, modern technology and how smartphones are used and all of that. So you being uh, the younger generation, I'm very old. Uh, you being the gen younger generation are more familiar with these modern devices and how they are used and what are smart watches. My watch is like, I don't know, like five, cost five rupees or something. Uh, it, it's not very fancy, right? And you are used to all these new, uh, new devices as well, okay? But we do need to go over this stuff. It will seem very basic. That's the whole point. To get you started with something that you're familiar with. Okay, we're going to start with those concepts and even in today's lecture, we are
the concepts which are new i'm going to focus on more other than that it's just an introduction it's a soft introduction just to get you started okay so we're going to start talking about uh, what networking is today what are the entities involved what are the components what sorts of devices what do we mean by the uh, by the words the jargon that we use the terminology that we use so we're going to start off with that yes at the moment it's not i'll upload after the class okay just so we can pay attention because i'll be writing on these so they will not be complete until i make them available okay so uh, so we're going to first talk about the components what are in what are the things which are included in networks and you will notice that we haven't actually like formally defined what a network is right and we're talking about what is inside a network but first you should tell what a network is and then go, go into what the components of a network are but the problem here is that a network itself is nothing a network is just a collection of other things right so unless you understand those other things you cannot understand what a network is so what we are going to study first is the components of the uh, of the networks okay and then we're going to talk about what a network actually is yes so so we are going to first talk about what sorts of devices that are available okay so each computer on a network now again we haven't defined a network so what does each computer on a network means okay what it means is that a network is simply a collection of different components and the most familiar of those is a computer to you the most familiar of those should be the computer okay so you've used a computer before you've used a phone these things so here think of the computer as any device a computer is a pc or a laptop or a mobile phone or a smartwatch or, uh, your uh, sensors like smart sensors your doorbells fridge anything that is connected somehow to the uh, to other devices so that is going to be your uh, computer okay they can be called a host or an end device they're called end devices because those are the things which are right at the outside of the network okay again these are terminologies which are useful we're not just defining end devices for the sake of it later on when you're studying networks they're going to say this is an end device and that's it so that has its own implications it means something so you have to understand that an end device is anything that is right at the end of the uh, network and essentially it's something that users are going to be interacting with okay so they can be uh, something that provides services or they can be something that our clients or something that uses the services so we've taken an example of this you would have all seen this before uh, if you go to a website you use your browser to access that website so your browser is on a machine which is an end device you will notice that i did not say that your browser is an end device and i said your browser is on a machine which is an end device okay so the device is the end device the software that runs on top of that is not called the end device the device is actual physical hardware okay so you access this from one end device to another end device the other end device is the gmail web server they are going to send res responses to you they are going to provide some service to you okay so these two are end devices and anything in the middle is going to be called an intermediate device okay intermediate something in the middle of other thing okay we'll come we'll come to this so there are uh, quite a few examples over here there is a lot of material in these slides i'm going to cover the essential things which are important for our discussion and all the smaller examples and all the uh, smaller details i'm going to leave for you so that you can when you're revising you can go through these okay so for example this stuff over here you can read through it it's not all that important okay i'm going to cover the important stuff uh, in this slides okay so there are two types of networks essentially one that we saw in the previous slide which is that one entity provides a service the whole point of creating that entity is to provide services okay this device is not used to access other services typically okay so this thing is called a server and the device the other device which uses these services is called the client so one is the client service architecture uh, client server architecture okay so this is called the client server architecture one is the provider the other is the consumer okay there is also what is called the peer to peer connections right peer to peer peer do you know what peer means it's equals equals right so kind of like everybody is the same so peer to peer means i am going to provide some services and i am also going to consume some services 
you are going to provide some services and you are also going to consume some services. Okay? For example, you are doing an assignment and you split the assignment into two questions. I will do question one, do you do question two. After we are both done, we can just copy off each other. Okay? Uh, typically, this is not how it is done. Typically, one person does the whole thing and the other person copies. But uh, that is the client server architecture and this thing in which you share stuff, you provide some services, the other entity provides, entity is just a thing. Okay? The word entity is going to be used repeatedly. Just note that entity means thing, okay? some, some object, something that is going to do something. Okay? So peer-to-peer uh, -peer means different entities which are involved provide services and they also consume services. Okay? What's an example of this? An example of this is if you have a, uh, this thing over here which is a file sharing server. Okay? So this file sharing server can provide services. What services? It can provide files to others okay? on the network. Again, we haven't defined what a network is. Okay? It's going to take a while before we actually get to like the proper definition. But you can imagine that it's things which are connected to each other. Okay? Just for now, that is going to be our working definition. So on this network, we have a file sharing server. It provides services. What services? It allows others to access files which are stored on it. Okay? There is also another server, which is a print server. It provides another service, which is allowing you to print stuff. Now the file server, file sharing server provides some services which is file sharing. It consumes some server, uh, some services which are print service. So you can go ahead and log on to this machine and start using it. You are providing services and you are also consuming services. Similarly over there. Another very good example of this is uh, the torrent network. Are you aware of what a torrent is? Okay. So if you're not, uh, it's essentially what it means is if you're downloading a very large file, how do you download a very large file? You go to their website and you click on the, on the download button and the file comes from that server to your machine. Okay? That's how you typically do it, right? Great. So this is a server client architecture or client server architecture. I'm the client. I want the file. I go to you. You provide me the service of the file and I get the file. This is client server. There is also the torrent architecture for file sharing, which is I go talk to the server. The server sends me the first one gigabyte of the file to me. The whole file is like 10 gigabytes. It only sends me the first one gigabyte because it's going to take a while to download that one gigabyte. Agreed? Okay. Some other person comes along, they send them the second gigabyte. Again, one gigabyte, but the second one. Out of 10, two out of 10. That goes to the second person. The third person comes along, the server sends the three out of 10 to the third person. Okay. And so now you have 10 people downloading, part 1 is with me, part 2 is with you, part 3 is with this person, part 4 with this person, part 5 with this person, and so on. So now all of us have 1 over 10 of the whole 10 GB file. Agree? One part with me, one part with this person, one part with this person, and so on. Okay? Agreed up until this point? Now the server goes away. Okay? The server tells me, these are the other 9 people, go get the rest of the parts from them. Agreed? So what's the benefit? Now the server can do something else. There is reduced load on the server. Okay? The other benefit, if all 10 of us are geographically close together, now I can get the other parts very quickly because they're closer to me. I can have high speed connection here. Everybody understand? Plus there are other benefits as well. We're not going into the benefit. Do you understand what peer to peer means? Now we 10 are all peers. I'm going to provide one part to this person and to this person and to this person and I'm going to get one part from this person and from this person and from this person. So we are kind of like all equal now. The server which could do everything is now gone. We are now peers and this connection that we have established is a peer-to-peer -peer connection. Agreed? Is this clear? So these are the two major architectures. Client-server architecture and peer-to-peer -peer architecture. Okay? Peer-to-peer -peer architecture seems like a really good idea. Unfortunately, it has never taken off. There are very few use cases of peer-to-peer -peer architecture. There are some, but there are very few. Okay. We just saw that it's it's it sounds like a very good idea. Okay. Which way is the client-server? Typically, client-server architecture is used. Only at this time downloading. Yes. Okay. Yes. Generally, client-server architecture is used. Okay. Peer-to-peer -peer architecture. We're going to sometimes refer to it, but it's not that important uh, in most cases. Okay, there are a few use cases, but not that many. 
but you have to understand what peer to peer or p2p means it's generally written as p2p so peer to peer okay that is what p2p means is that clear okay so <clears throat> There are advantages and disadvantages. Again, you can go through these in detail, uh, and you can study it in uh, further detail if you want. We're going to move on uh, to the definition of other uh, devices. So you have end devices. So let's say you have this, uh, this home over here. So this is one office. In it, we have some device with which a PC, another PC, another PC, and a phone, and a server, and everything is connected to this just one device. Is this clear? This one device is special, this one in the middle. It's special. Why is it special? Because as you can see, everything is connected to this one thing. So you can imagine, even without understanding what it is, you can imagine that this is like connecting everything together. Clear? Okay. Similarly over here, this is the device which is connecting everything together. And this device is connecting to devices outside our network as well. So this is our home network. Okay. Uh, we have one device which connects to the rest of the world for us, right? For example, at your home, you would have like a, like a modem, which you got from like mobile or STC or whatever, right? And you connect to that, and that allows you to connect to everybody else. Inside your home, everybody connects to this one device, and outside your home, it's the responsibility of this device to like get you connected to everybody else. If you plug it off, you get disconnected from the internet. Why? Because it's one device which is doing all the routing, like everything that is happening is going through this one route, this one highway. Everybody understand this word, what I just said? You have this one highway which connects you to everything else, all the rest of the world. Okay? Typically, you have one device which does this whole thing. Okay? This thing is called a gateway. When I'm trying to explain these concepts, when I'm doing an introduction, I'm going to sometimes like give you incorrect information, okay? I'm going to, I mean, this isn't like the definition of a gateway. Technically, what I just said is wrong, but it helps you understand. We're going to fix what a gateway exactly is later on. But for now, it's a gateway. It's the big door which allows you to go to the rest of the world, okay? Did you say that in the quiz? Or? Yes, yes. By the time we get to the quiz, we would have the exact definition of what a gateway is. Okay, in fact, we'll have this in the next uh, lesson. So you'll see what a gateway is, okay? But uh, yes. All right, so now you you have a device which allows you to connect to the rest of the world. So this thing, this smaller network, which is very local to some particular area, right? very local, very close together. All these devices are very close together. This is called a local area. So it's an area which is very local, very close together and it creates a network. So this is called a local area network or a LAN. In short, we call it LAN. Like in the network's terminology, everybody calls a LAN. You should understand what a LAN is. It's a local area network, very close together. So for example, these devices all over here, they are connected to probably, we should have a switch somewhere here, but there is going to be one device with which all of these PCs are connected, okay? So this thing over here is a LAN. Okay. One device is not a LAN, all these devices connected together, including the communication media, the thing on which your communication information flows, and the end devices, these devices which are at the end. So all of this combined, this is called your local area network or LAN for short. Okay, is clear? Okay. Then you have another LAN over here, which is somebody else. So you can have multiple LANs. Obviously, one area is one LAN, the other is another LAN, another lab is going to have another LAN, and so on and so forth. And you might have something in the middle which connects this one LAN to another LAN. Okay, this clear? So you can have one LAN connected to another LAN because obviously we might want to send an email from this to another geographical location, another country. And in that country, there is going to be another university. And in that university, there is going to be a lab. And in that lab, there is going to be a PC. That is the end device where we want to send our email to. This clear? So, you start from one LAN, you go to some intermediate network, okay? It's called an internetwork, but nobody calls it that. Everybody calls it just the internet. 
and then you have another LAN at the end where uh, another user is sitting and you are trying to communicate with them. Okay? This is the overall architecture. So these things with which this person is going to communicate are called end devices and then you have all of these intermediate devices which are there simply to send your information from one place to another. So the whole purpose of having this guy over here is so that it can send information from one point to another point. Nobody is interacting with it directly. There is no user sitting on this device. We'll see what this device is later on. You understand? So these are called intermediate devices. The job of the intermediate devices is to connect one or more end devices. Okay? Is this clear? Okay. So intermediate network devices interconnects end devices. So you have end devices which needs to be connected. Sometimes they cannot be connected directly. For example, this PC cannot be connected directly to a PC in, let's say, ANR building, which is like a completely different building. Why? Because you'll have to connect one wire here and then take the wire all the way over there and then connect it to that. And what if later on you want to connect to another PC? Do you take another wire? Okay. And let's say you have 25 PCs here and 25 over there. So now you have 25 wires coming out of this and 25 wires coming out of this and 25 wires come. So it's going to be a whole big mess. You understand? So we need to have something in the middle. All of these connect to that and that connects to all of those. So now you only have 25 wires going out. So can it be connected yes, we, we have different types of uh, devices, intermediate devices. We're going to come to uh, what those devices are. But for now, so if you have three devices here and three devices here and you want to connect them all with each other, you're going to have nine cables. Okay. But if you introduce an intermediary device over here, you have just six cables. Okay. And the more the number of devices, the better benefit you're going to get. Okay. So it's going to be like a factorial. We don't have to go into the mathematics of it, but it's going to be a very um, uh, large improvement. Is this clear? So that is why you have uh, intermediate devices. So this thing is not going to make sense at the moment. Uh, we're going to come like back to it, this discussion when we get to it, okay? Okay, so now you have end devices and you have intermediate devices, but you want to connect one device to another. How do you do that? You do it using what is called network media. We use the word media, which is a very general term. It's a very generic term. The reason for that is you can have wires, you can have plastic fibers, uh, you can have even wireless transmission, which uses radio waves, okay? So anything that we can use to send some information from one point to another point. It can be air for wireless, it can be a wire, it can be glass, it can be copper, it can be brass, it can be a lot of other things. So all of this combined is called the media. And because it's used to, media essentially, the word medium means anything through which other things go. That is what the word medium means, okay? Media is the plural of medium. So network media is anything over which information flows in a network. You have connected devices, anything over which your information can flow, that is called a network media, okay? Right, so there are a few examples over here. You've probably seen all of these. So you, you have wires, which are connected to normal PCs. You have fiber optic, which is high, uh, high speed. And the reason for that is it uses light and all of that. And then you have wireless, uh, which is more convenient for end users, right? If you have a mobile phone, it's much more convenient to just have a wireless connection instead of having to plug in a wire into your mobile phone. That would be horrible, I believe, right? Okay. So now you have these things connected with each other. Now we have to figure out what are the options? What options do we have? Uh, what do we mean by that? For example, if you have all of these devices, all of these end devices, okay? Do I connect each device to every other device? Okay, that would be a bad idea, but it's an option, right? I have three PCs, so I can have this PC connected to both of these, and this PC connected to both of these, and the third PC connected to both, okay? So we can have this. You can also have, for example, five PCs, so this is connected to all of the other four, this is connected to all of the other four, uh, this is connected to all of the other four, and this is connected to all of the other four, right? So as you can see, it quickly becomes a problem. There are too many connections but it's still an option. So this thing, how you connect one device to another device, the whole plan, that is called the topology, okay? 
So call topology. So network diagrams, what are network diagrams? They define what end devices you have, what are the communication media, what are the intermediate devices. All these things combined are drawn visually so that it's easy for us to understand. If I tell you that we have these PCs over here and if I to took a photograph of this whole lab, you would not know what device this PC is connected to. Agreed? I can't see the wire. I don't know whether this is connected to this PC or to some other device. I don't know. Everybody agree? So in order to understand how devices are connected, we draw something which looks like this. Okay? This is the topology. This diagram is called a network diagram. Yes, kind of. So there are many aspects of, of discussion to be had in this. I mean, which device do you connect to which device, right? What can each device do? Which types of devices can be connected to each other? What cables can be used to connect which things? All of these discussions are going to come uh, into our discussion slowly. Okay, but at the moment the point is this thing is called a network diagram. Okay, it's also called a topology. There is a, m a minor difference, but it's essentially the same thing, right? So the things which are important to understand in this uh, in this diagram is obviously what end devices you have, what intermediate devices you have, what are the network media which are involved. For example, do you have wireless? Do you have fiber optic? Do you have wired connections? Wired connection is anything which has a wire. Okay, great. You also need to understand that in the end device, in this end device, if you have a cable and you want to connect it, which hardware do you connect it to? I mean, if you take a network cable, you cannot plug it into a USB, right? Great. The USB cable is different and the network cable is different. We're going to show you what the network cable actually looks like, but you can search for it. it it's like a square thing with a completely different connector. It's, it doesn't go into the USB. So you need to have some sort of a device in each computer. Computer can be, whenever I say throughout this course, whenever I say computer, I mean a PC, laptop, mobile device, anything, right? Any, any end device, okay? Computer is end device for our discussion, okay? So in every computer, you need to have something which, is, which supports the network media that you're trying to use. Let me say that again. In each device that you have, end device or computer, you need to have some sort of a hardware which can utilize the network media that you're trying to use. For example, if you're trying to use a wire, you need to have some hardware where you can plug the wire. Agreed? If you're trying to use wireless, you need to have some hardware which can receive and send radio waves. Okay? If you're trying to do fiber optic media, you need to have some sort of a device in which you can plug in your um, fiber optic. Right? It's, it's a glass thread. It's a very fine glass thread. Okay? We, we'll, we'll see if we can make it available for you. Okay? Is this clear? So this thing, this hardware in which you can plug in the network media is called the network interface card. It doesn't have to be a physical card. Right? A card, uh, card in PC, if you haven't studied this in, in another course, it's simply like a, a chip sort of a thing. Right? A flat thing, that's why it's called a card. And because it interfaces or connects with the network, it's called the network interface card or NIC. It doesn't have to have to be a, like a physical card. It can also be like a wireless antenna or something like that, but it's called an NIC. Okay. Typically we pronounce it as NIC, not as NIC. We call it NIC. I don't know why. Right? But in the networks field, everybody just calls it the NIC. Okay. Because it's very common. It's, it's the thing which allows you to connect to the network. So it's a very common discussion point. Is this clear? Okay. You also need a physical port. So in the network card, you need a port and a port is anything in which you can plug stuff in. Okay. So if you look at any uh, like computer, the back of any PC, you will see many slots or uh, holes in which you can plug in different wires. All of these are called ports. Okay. And the interface is something that is going to be like software related. So we're going to come to that later on, right? At the moment, all, you, all we are discussing is the hardware, but you always need some sort of a software to support the hardware. So this is going to come in the software discussion, okay? So these are what topology diagrams typically look like. There are two basic types of the diagrams. For the same topology, you can have two types of diagrams. One is the physical topology diagram. So physical essentially means 
we focus on where things are. Right? This is going to become very clear when we do the simulator. But in the physical thing, for example, uh, you are going to see where each PC is placed. This PC is on table number one, that PC is on table number two. This PC is on table number three. Okay? And the switch is in lab one. There is, there is another device, intermediate device called switch, that is in lab one. So physically where things are, we are more concerned with that. This is called the physical topology diagram. Sometimes it's useful. Why? Because if you're trying to figure out how to connect this lab, to another lab through a wire, you need to calculate how long a wire you need. Right? Is it close? Is it like 5 meters or 10 meters or 20 meters? How far is it? You need to know that. So physical, import, uh, physical things are sometimes important, but mostly what we are concerned with is the logical topo uh, topology diagrams. So what logical topology diagram essentially means is how are things connected? So if this PC is connected to another PC which is in like the third lab, if it's directly connected, we are going to draw it like this. Even though they are geographically dispersed. One is here, the other is very far away. We're still going to draw it in the logical diagram. We're going to draw them very close together. Why? Because logically, as far as our connections are concerned, they are very close together. Okay? Is this clear? So logical essentially means how have we connected things to each other. So if you put this PC here, and the other PC right next to it, but you connect this to, let's say, a, a server in a completely different building, and you connect this to another, another server in a completely third building, okay? And then those are two are connected together. They are physically close together, but logically they are very far apart. Because as far as the network is concerned, if you want to send some information from this PC to this PC, it cannot simply jump. It has to go from here to there, and from there to there, and from there to back here. So logically, they are very far apart. Is this clear? So these are the two views which we typically look at. Again, this is going to become much more clear when we actually do the uh, simulator and look at it like physically. Okay, it's physically because it's still going to be in a software, but you will be able to see both these views. Okay, is this clear? Okay. So now we are coming back to some right. like yes. Right. So there are two types of topology diagrams. What is a topology? How are things connected to each other? Okay. So when we look at things, how are they connected together? We might be concerned with two aspects, two points of view. Number one, physically where are they? In the real world, are the two pieces placed close together to each other? Okay. So I have this phone, which is very close to my laptop. So in the physical topology, they are going to be drawn together, close together, okay? Is this clear? In the logical topology, we are more concerned not with their physical location, but what they are connected with. So for example, this laptop is connected to our Wi-Fi. I hope, if the Wi-Fi is not down, right? So this is connected to the Wi-Fi, the university Wi-Fi. This thing is not connected to the Wi-Fi because I did not enter my password. So this thing is connected to my mobile provider, mobile e. okay? It's connected to that. So if I want to place them logically, this is logically very far away from this. Why? Because this, if I want to communicate, this has to go to my mobile provider and then it has to go to my university's internet service provider and then that has to come to my university server, then it has to come to my Wi-Fi, and then from my, fi my Wi-Fi it has to come from my laptop. So logically they are very far apart. So if you drew uh, a logical diagram, logical topology diagram, my laptop is going to probably be here, and my mobile phone is going to be over here, very far apart. But in, in physical thing, they are going to be very close together over here. Sometimes that is useful, sometimes this is useful. Logical diagrams are much more useful for us in networks. Okay? Because we don't care how close the PCs are. We're more concerned with how they are connected to each other. Is this clear? Okay. So, what are the types of network? Again, uh, this is going to be useful when we do discussions. We're going to use some terminology, so you should be aware of that. This is very straightforward. Uh, if you have a small home, uh, you are going to typically uh, create like a local area network. Right? So small, small ho um, home and home networks, small office networks, these are going to be uh, 
local area networks, right? So we have terminology of this over here. Uh, we'll come to that. But you can also have like medium to large, a pretty large building in which you have multiple local area networks connected together. And you can also have multiple buildings of multiple countries, multiple continents, all the world connected together. So all of these are different types. So from a very small scale to a very large scale, fairly basic stuff. So network infrastructure uh, can vary in size. So how much area is covered, but typically we're not concerned with the area. We are typically concerned with how many devices they are connected to something. Okay. Number of users which are connected, number and types of available services, right? So all of these things affect what kind of network infrastructure you want to create. For example, if you have a large number of users, you would probably have a lot of very high speed network media connected. Agreed? If you have only two users, you don't need a very high fi Wi-Fi system. You can have like a cheap one, okay? If you have like 15 users trying to use the same Wi-Fi and you have a like a home device, which is designed for like four or five users, then these 15 users cannot use the device properly. Agreed? A device which is created for five users cannot be used by 15 users efficiently. It's going to slow down, agreed? So these are the type of discussions that we need to have when we are trying to create the network infrastructure, okay? We're going to come to what the issues are, but these are the factors. These are the things which affect our network, okay? Area of responsibility, how far do you want to provide the services, right? So if you have a service, is it going to be made available globally or is it just for your users? For example, if you have a service which allows the users of a university to share information with each other, share files with each other, and we have a server here, this server is only for this university. So its responsibility is a very small area. But Gmail, for example, it also allows, it does the same thing. It allows you to access your files, but it is operating at a global scale. Okay, so, so their infrastructure is going to be different from our infrastructure. Okay, so infrastructure is affected by how far your services have to be provided. Okay, so the two, based on these things, the two basic types of uh, network are LAN, which is local area network, a very small area, all the PCs, essentially kind of connected to each other very fast, they can talk to each other, okay? Then you have an intermediate device which allows one local area network LAN to connect to another LAN, right? So once you have this, typically this is called a wide area network, WAN, okay? So what is a wide area network? A wide area network is essentially collection of LANs, essentially. Okay, so you have one LAN, another LAN, another LAN, they want to communicate with each other, you connect them through intermediate devices. Now these are, this whole thing combined is a WAN, okay, wide area network. We used to have something called a MAN, which is metropolitan area network. A metropolitan is a large city, right? But this terminology is no longer used that much because you either have a LAN, which is a small connected, small number of connected PCs, or you have a van, everything else is a van. Okay, typically nowadays, it's either a land or a van. Because we figured out that it doesn't make a difference if you call it a man or a van. I mean, for a city, the same infrastructure that you create for a city, that is also going to be for like a whole building. And it's the same infrastructure which is used throughout the world. Same infrastructure, it doesn't affect us. So now the word man, which is metropolitan area network is no longer used that commonly. So it's either a land, which is a small geographical area, if you have collection of lands, it's a WAN, okay? WAN with a W, wide area network, okay? As the name suggests, local and wide, okay? So this thing over here, this is a LAN, okay? And even though it says this thing is a WAN, this thing is not the WAN, uh, this whole thing combined together is going to be called the WAN, essentially, okay? But because these are like separately LANs, we call that thing the WAN. Do you understand? So WAN is essentially like the whole thing, wide area network. So it's just one big whole network. Okay. So yes. But to differentiate between these two, we're going to say that this is the LAN and this is the WAN. Okay. What I'm saying is, let me say this again. What I'm saying is this whole thing is the WAN, not just this. Okay. Let me say this again. What I'm saying is this whole thing is the WAN. What the slide says is that this thing is the WAN. Both are kind of right. Right. Because when we are talking about van devices, what devices are used in the van, they are going to be put over there, okay, in this little box. 
Okay, and that is going to be our concern, like in in half of our course. Okay, we'll come back to. Again, this is kind of like an introduction, right? So we're just painting the big picture. What are the entities involved? What are the issues that we're going to talk about later on? We're going to go into in detail of what a LAN exactly is and how do you differentiate between a LAN and a WAN from a practical perspective. Okay, we're going to come back to this. Okay, so typically uh, the LAN is interconnected end devices. So in the LAN, the focus is on end devices. Why? Because it's a small area, users are actually using this. In WAN, the focus is on uh, connecting LANs. So intermediate devices are the focus in WAN. Okay. And all the rest is not that important. So you have high speed bandwidth, slower speed because you are essentially connecting the whole world together and all of that. Okay. Like I said, some of the details in the slides you're going to have to come back to yourself. I'm covering the important stuff. So now what is an internet? An internet, I like to define the internet as like a really big WAN. It's just connection of local area networks. It just so happens that the local area networks are throughout the world. Now you connect all of the land here and the land there and the land there and the land there and the land there. All of these connected together. When you combine everything that is connected to this one big chunk, right? As soon as you connect to it, this whole thing is called the internet, right? So internet is not just the material outside of this lab. This lab is also part of the internet, right? So again, this whole thing is the internet. So if you connect vans together, it turns into the internet essentially okay say this again if you have a van and another van and another van like 1000 vans in one country another thousand vans in another country and you connect them together you get the internet it's, it's as simple as that okay and as you can imagine what this means is that nobody actually owns the internet why because internet isn't a thing it's simply a collection of different things and all of those different things are owned by other people Right? For example, these PCs are owned by our university, but they are also part of the internet. There are going to be other PCs which are going to be owned by the country's government. Okay? One country's government. Another country is going to have other devices. They own those. And when they connect to each other, this whole thing turns into an internet, but nobody owns the internet. Disagreed? Okay? But if you are going to communicate with different people, you need to have some rules. Right? If two people want to communicate with each other, they have to agree on some rules. They have to agree that they are going to speak to each other. They have to agree on the language. They have to agree whether they are going to be close to each other or not. All of these rules have to be like followed. If you don't follow those rules, for example, if I say that I want to talk to you and I go stand uh, like next to the restaurant and start talking to you, it's not going to work. Okay. Why? Because I'm not following the rules. The rules of Person-to-person -person communication is you have to be within hearing distance. Okay? You have to be close together. Okay? Disagree? So similarly, in the network or on the internet, you need to have rules. If one device is going to communicate to another device, there need to be defined some rules. And what essentially the internet is, it's the collection of all of these rules that the whole world has agreed to follow. And why does everybody agree to follow these? Because if you don't, then you cannot talk to the rest of the world. So you have to agree to these rules. Agreed? Okay. So there are three organizations which essentially define the rules. Uh, I mean, they come up with rules and then people sort of agree with them. So it's IETF, ICANN, and IAD. I don't know what any of those means, but uh, you should look them up once, right? It's uh, Internet something something task force, and then you have the naming something something something. I don't know, right? It's not important. Uh, when we come to what they actually do, so ICANN is going to be important when we do uh, a particular thing. So we're going to come back to what it means. What does ICANN actually do? But for now, you just have to be aware that there are standards organizations which define the rules which are followed by everybody in the world in order to connect to the internet. Okay? You don't have to remember this thing. You just have to understand. Okay? They come up with the rules that everybody follows because if they don't follow, they cannot talk to everybody else. Okay? All right. So finally, you have, if you have a company only network and only the employees of that company can access the, those services, right? We call that an intranet. And now this is a logical separation. You have whatever network is available, but the services provided within that network are only available within a particular organization. That is called the intranet. 
okay? There is also the extra net, which nobody uses, but this is going to be a network in which your organization is going to be able to access services. Plus, if you have suppliers, if you have other stakeholders, for example, if you're running a car manufacturing company, your intranet is only going to be available for your employees. Your extranet is going to be available to people who manufacture the tires because you purchase it from them. It's also going to be available to your, let's say, distributors or your showrooms. Okay? So everybody who's directly involved with you, that is called the extranet. Uh, extranet. But nobody uses this, right? It's, nobody uses this word. So, and the final uh, logical connection of everybody is the internet. Okay? So typically, you're asked to differentiate between the internet and the intranet. What's the difference? Internet is the services provider provided are available to everybody. Right? You can have authentication, mm -hmm. username, password, that's a separate thing, but they are available to everybody. Intranet is services are available to only your organization, your employees, your owners, people like that. Okay. Everybody who's directly involved with the organization. This clear? Mm -hmm. For example, if we have a file server over here, which allows the users to access the senior projects of everybody who did their senior projects in the past. Okay? So from whenever we started doing senior projects, all the senior projects are reports and the zip files, they are put in a folder and they are available to everybody who's a university student. Okay? We don't want to make them publicly available because maybe those students don't want them to be available to everybody outside. Okay, so this resource is only available to our university employees, our students, our faculty, our administration, and this. So this thing is going to be put in what is called an intranet. Why? Because if you make it available to everybody, then it's going to go on the internet, and now anybody can access it, which you don't want. So some services you want inside your organization. That's a separate thing. So hackers can hack the internet and then get access to it, but that's not our intended use. What we intend is only for our own people to use it, okay. right? If we intend everybody to use it, it's the internet. If we intend only a particular uh, set of people within our own organization to use them, then it's the intranet, okay? What happens, what actually happens, and if somebody like hacks it and gets in and gets access to it, or if like, for example, I download a senior project and like send it over email to somebody else, that's not the intended use. So the, the distinction here is of the intended use, not what actually happens. Okay. What did you want to happen? Okay, all right. So connections typically, uh, when you want to get on the internet, when you want to get access to the internet, there are certain uh, things which you must do. For example, you cannot connect to the internet yourself. Why? Because you, see, what is the internet? I have a LAN at home and what is the internet? Essentially, I want to connect to another device that is connected to the rest of the world. That is what the internet is, right? Okay, I'll say this again. I have like three PCs connected at home and they are connected to one single device. Okay, I can communicate among these three devices. But I want to connect to the rest of the world. In order to connect to the rest of the world, I cannot physically connect to all the other devices in the world. That will be very expensive for me. Okay. There are millions and billions of devices. It will be very expensive. So what I want is, I want somebody who's already connected to the internet and I go and request them, can you please allow me to connect to you? They're going to say, why? Because I want to connect to the internet. They're going to say, why? Because I want to send information. Now they're not going to say, why? They're going to say, okay, but what do I get? I'm going to connect to them. They provide me a service. What service do I provide them? I don't have anything. I don't have only one thing, money. So I pay them, right? Because I cannot do anything else for them. So I pay them, okay? That is why we have to pay for the internet. Not because the internet is paid, but because the people who are already, already on the internet, they have spent a lot of money creating that connection, right? This particular PC, this particular device that I'm connecting to, they have already spent in millions and billions of reals or dollars or whatever to connect to other devices. So now they want their money back. That is why you have these internet service providers.
or ISPs. They're typically short, uh, shortened to ISPs. Everybody just call them ISPs, right? So what is an ISP? They are an internet service provider. Essentially what it means is they give you a device, you can connect to this device, we'll forward all your information and take your information and send it back to you. They just create that link and they charge for it. And you know why, okay? Because you cannot provide anything in return. So you provide money, they charge you for it, they connect. Now the discussion over here is, how do you connect to the internet service provider? There are different options. The very popular one is nowadays is the DSL. There, when I uh, started uh, back in the 90s and 2000s, we used to have like a modem which would connect over the telephone line. That was a really bad idea. It wasn't a bad idea, but it was horrible. The, I think I told you this before, but I'll say this again, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. So when I was learning computer science, I did have internet, but if we had everything going well and nobody else was using the internet, like nobody in my neighborhood was using the internet, I was the only one, for example, if I get up at two in the morning and I get access to the internet because I have to do something very important and I connect to the internet and I get the maximum speed possible, right? At that time, the maximum speed possible, the, I mean, the thing that we were like, ooh, yes, that kind of speed. That was 3.2 kilobytes per second. 3.2, I mean, you cannot even open a web page on 3.2 kilobytes, right? That was a high speed connection, 3.2 kilobytes per second, okay? Now even a 3.2 megabytes per second is not sufficient, right? Because you have to download multiple gigabytes. But what I'm saying is, we, we used to have that infrastructure. Obviously, as technology developed, we got what are called DSLs. Right? DSLs at that time was, was very, very expensive, but what they do is they use slightly different technology and that brings me to a very important point. In this course, our focus is going to be on the use of the networks. We are not going to look at how the devices are manufactured. We are not going to look at the engineering of the devices. We are not going to look at what kind of electricity is used to send information from one thing to another. We are not going to look at the theory behind how a fiber optic works. The devices are going to be there from an IT perspective, what we are concerned with how is how to use them. Okay, we are going to not create devices, but use them. So we don't have to understand the difference between a cable modem, which is th the 3.2 one I just told you and the DSL. We don't have to understand the difference. All we have to understand is how fast can DSL be as compared to uh, a cable modem. How fast can your fiber optic be? Do you have a fiber optic over here? So what kind of availability is there? If you have a wireless connection, how fast can it be? If you have a wired connection, how fast can it be? How it's created is not our concern in this course. Okay, There are some courses which deal with this. That is not our concern. Is this clear? Okay. So you can have a cable modem, which I told you it used to be slow. Eventually, it turned into a high bandwidth, always on a uh, kind of high speed connection. But nowadays, mostly people use DSL. Okay, uh, DSL nowadays is typically done using fiber optic. So again, we're not concerned with the actual hardware. Uh, you also have cellular, if you use your mobile phone to connect to the package, right? And you use that, that is called cellular. You can also have satellite. So have you heard of the Starlink? I believe it's called. Have you heard of it? No. Okay. So Starlink is, uh, is a company which provides end user satellite services. What it means is you go and purchase their like a dish antenna, right? It's, I guess this big, something like that. You purchase it and you put it uh, on the rooftop and this device connects direct to the satellite in orbit. Okay, so it's, it depends. I haven't used Starlink and there are mixed, I mean, it depends on where you are, whether it's fast or not. But, but the point of a, a satellite is now you are not connecting to this device, which is in your own country, right? That might be a good thing or a bad thing, but the pros are now, if your country is trying to stop you from doing something, you can bypass, right? And that is 
again that is uh, when i say it like that it sounds like uh, sounds like a good thing but it's generally used for many problematic things think of this think of it this way uh, if there is a country so starlink is created by uh, by it's owned by elon musk right so he is a us national okay so whatever his beliefs are we're not going into whether they're right or wrong whatever his beliefs are right if somebody in the world disagrees or like they are against their own government and elon musk agrees with them he sends a starlink and now they can communicate directly bypass the government and everything all the sudden i mean that generally is not considered a good thing uh, because now you cannot enforce prob uh, enforce rules of the country in which you live in right laws are there for a reason right but if you have this connectivity you're in a position in which the country's laws cannot be enforced on you right sometimes that's a bad thing but generally uh, that creates problem right so <clears throat> what you have to understand here we're not going into the politics of it what we are saying is that these things actually affect real people real world economies politics all of those things are affected okay so when we go into this field we have to understand the implications of our actions over here right so here what what our concern in this course is if you have a satellite you essentially bypass everything and you connect directly to the main internet right the high speed internet you go to the satellite and go down to the high speed internet you bypass all the geographical limitations is this clear okay so again it might have pros and it might have cons so our concern here is not the pros and cons our concern is only the infrastructure the technology what is available and what is not available and the good thing about uh, this course at least for us is we don't have to deal with this stuff right why because we are going to talk about devices here and here like i said we are not going to be dealing with the medium how your information gets from point a to point b that is not going to be our concern okay so we're not going to actually deal with this stuff all of this stuff these are just there so that you understand that these options are there in the uh, in the thing in this course we are not going to be dealing with these things we are going to be dealing with essentially the end devices and the intermediate devices the network media is not going to be our concern is this clear okay so we have just a couple of uh, more things over here so you have a dedicated lease line in which the companies pay more to get high speed internet uh you have ethernet van again companies uh, get these services this is not really important so i'm going to skip over this you can go uh, read through these uh, on your own time okay so just one final thing and then we're stopping so nowadays uh, networks as you can imagine uh, for the past i guess 20 uh, 20 years or so networks have been essential right like i said um, earlier on as well if you want to connect to anything else other than your own one device you have to use the internet you have to use network right and we cannot do anything on one device anymore essentially you cannot do anything useful okay so modern trends are uh, like bring your own device so what does that mean it means that when an organization hires anybody they don't provide a device to them like back in like a couple of years back uh, when you were hired by a company let's say a sales company or a company which sells cars or something and you were hired as a sales person they would give you like a device right why because you're supposed to do things for them and they want you to stay connected right so they would give you a device eventually they figured out that we don't have to give this person a device because they already have a mobile phone right and because they are like cheap stakes most of the companies they say we don't have to pay just let them use their own device right that comes with problems why because now we have to deal with this person's device on which there might be antivirus it might be hacked by somebody else their password may be with somebody else and now we are going to release our information company information sensitive information to this device so with this simple concept of bring your own device what this means is bring your own personal device which is either a laptop or a mobile phone or whatever bring that to work and we will provide facilities on that device to you so this is what bring your own device means bring your own device to work for the company okay generally people also prefer this because i already have this phone even if the university gave me another phone for the services now i have to carry two so i don't like it either agreed unless they give me like an iphone 15 or something then then i can throw this one away 
but you have to give that back anyway, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, do you, you get the point? So here, why are we talking about this? The reason we are talking about this is because we are going to have this device, somebody else's device in our network, we have to protect our network from that device. We have to somehow connect that device to our network. All of these have to be done by us, the networking people. Okay? For, uh, for the sake of this course, we are the networking people, the IT people. Okay? Agreed? All right. So you also have online collaboration. What does that mean? You create uh, a document and I also work on that document with you. Why does that affect us? Now we have to create an infrastructure in which if I type J here, that J has to reach you like that. Otherwise, I'll be typing something and you don't see it. You'll see it like half an hour later. Then you overwrite the text that I written and it's a big mess. Okay. So online collaboration, what it means is different people can work together in real time on the same problem. Why does it affect us? We have to create the infrastructure that can have that speed to enable that. Exactly. So in the Google Sheet, you've seen that uh, different people can work on different cells at the same time, right? But in order to do that, you need to have the networking infrastructure that can send this information as quickly as possible, okay? So our concern is not the creation of Google Sheets, but the underlying issues involved in creating an infrastructure which can enable such high speeds, okay? And this is going to be a concern like later on in the course. Is this clear? Okay. So you have video communications. Again, if you're going to have video communications, you need to have a really high speed internet connection. And video communications is going to come up again and again when we do uh, discussions later on in the course. So video communication, as you can imagine, it requires very high speed, right? It has different set of issues from email. If your email takes like two minutes to go out, it's fine, no big deal. In most cases, if an email takes two minutes to reach the recipient, that's fine. Because the recipient is probably going to take like half an hour to check it anyway. Okay, so two minutes is not an issue. But if you're watching a video and the next frame of the video reaches you five seconds late, not two minutes, just five seconds late, it's a really bad experience, right? Five seconds is a huge thing. I mean, one second is, like, it's, it's horrible. You're like, what is happening? Why is the internet not working? Mom, well, stop using the internet, right? So something like that. So you also have cloud computing. Again, we have to provide infrastructure for all of this stuff that is going on around here, okay? So again, bring your own devices, online collaboration, video communication, cloud computing. Uh, in your home, uh, you have devices which can connect to the internet. So this is called the Internet of Things, IOT. That is how you write it, the O is small. So Internet of Things, IOT. So IOT is essentially, so what does the things in this Internet of Things means? Things essentially means any device, like your fire alarm, your fridge, your toaster, your sandwich maker, whatever, right? Uh, your bicycle, your skates, your shoes anything, right? Anything and everything is connected to the internet. This is called the internet of things. And as you can imagine, if you connect like 20 different devices attached to one person on the internet, it's going to be a huge explosion, right? It, it requires a lot of infrastructure changes. So internet of things is a very important thing. You can have ovens connected to the thing. And there are use cases which are, personally, I don't really find them very attractive. But it's a use case is, for example, there is an oven and you put your meal in the oven and you go out and uh, when you come back home, uh, the oven knows when you're going to come back because it can read your calendar and it can read where, what your working hours are. And so it knows how long it takes for you to get from your office back to your home. And by the time you get home, the oven would have already heated up your meal. That sounds like a really horrible idea. But that is essentially the goal of smart homes. Okay? So you have devices which can do stuff for you. Okay? At the moment, it doesn't work because if you put your meal in your oven, especially in this weather, by the time you get back, it's not going to be warm, it's going to be spoiled. Okay? And you will not be able to eat it. But you can imagine that, uh, I mean, later on you can have like a robot which takes the thing out and puts it in the oven. I don't personally find the use of that. I mean, it takes like two minutes to like, warm up your food. Stop being lazy. But this is the whole point of the IoT and it's something, see, we don't have to agree. That is, that is an important point here. When you're dealing with networks, you don't have to agree with their use cases. It's not up to you to decide whether what they're doing is right or wrong. We are there to create a high speed, reliable infrastructure. You do that and let them do whatever they want to do with their ovens and their toasters and everything. 
So we are concerned with the infrastructure. Okay. There is one thing which has been going on for a while now, but it hasn't taken off. I, I've been waiting for this for like, I don't know. I, the first time I read about this was like 10 years ago. Still hasn't happened. But the idea is the power line networking. What it means is all these power outlets that you see, which you plug your laptop in, the idea is that the same outlets are also going to carry your networking infrastructure. So if you want to connect to the internet, you just plug in your laptop and that carries the power and it also carries the yeah. network information, right? That's the idea. But it's been around for like 10 years or so at least, more than that, 10 to 15 years. Still hasn't happened. But Cisco people are saying that it's near, so maybe it is. I don't know. What's the difference between this and the internet modem? Right. So the difference is when you have the internet modem, you have it connected to the power. Obviously, you have to give it power. But you also have a separate wire which comes in and connects to it. A different wire. That wire carries the information. What this is saying is that wire is not going to be there anymore. The same single wire which you use to connect into this power outlet, that is also going to be used as the networking thing. right? And why is that good? Because everybody has electricity. The infrastructure is already there. I mean, if you go to a new house, I mean, I just recently moved, so I had to have somebody come in and install that wire for me. If we had this, I would not need, I would not have needed that. I would simply have plugged in and done. Okay. But again, I haven't actually seen this in practice anywhere. I've been hearing about this for a long while, but I don't know. You have wireless broadband, which is again, if you use wireless for uh, like high speed internet connectivity, you use your own uh, mobile phone for connection as well. This one? This one, yes. So broad, wireless broadband is essentially the same wireless that we use on our mobile phones, except it's faster, costs more. And you have 5G and all of that later coming on. Okay? We, in this course, we are not concerned with 5G and how uh, that happens, because it's more towards hardware side, but yes, high speed. Okay? Just one last thing, and then we're done. So what, do you, what can you do with, uh, with, the network, uh, when the, with the network speed? I discussed this very briefly earlier on. But here they have actually put, because these are slides from Cisco themselves, so you can actually go along uh, this route. You can do uh, CC, sorry. sorry. So you can do CCNA, so which is the first course in, uh, in a networks specialization and provided by Cisco. There are others as well. But uh, Cisco is the most popular one, so you can start with C CCNA. Uh, you can also do CCNP, and then CCIE is like, like a really professional level uh, certification. It's expensive, it's difficult. You need experience along with it as well. But these are the things, this is the track on which you can go if you want to focus on the uh, Cisco stack. Okay? Uh, I told you before, I'll say this again, there is also the Huawei option. But essentially, if you understand Cisco technologies and terminologies and all of that, Huawei is going to be very similar. Because like we discussed earlier on uh, in today's lecture, you have a set of rules that everybody agrees to. So it doesn't matter whether you come from Cisco or from Huawei, it's going to be the same set of rules. So if you understand the rules, you can go from Cisco to Huawei later on. Okay? Any questions? So in order to connect to the internet without knowing the password, you will have to go talk to your uh, ethical hacking teacher. Right? Maybe, maybe they'll teach you. Bismillah rahman rahim So this is our first practical for our networks course. This is an introductory lesson and we are going to install our packet tracer and get started with setting it up, adding some devices, establishing connections and looking at some uh, very basic things. And we are going to look at one little bit of troubleshooting that's going to help you understand all the different concepts. Okay. So because this is the very first step, I'm going to guide you through how to download this and install this. If you already know how to do that, good. If not, we are going to go through this uh, together. So the first thing you have to do is uh, you head over to any search engine uh, and search for skills for all, which is the platform by Cisco for their uh, courses. Okay, so there, these are video plus text courses. And in order to get access to the packet tracer by Cisco, which is the simulator that we're going to be using, you need to head over to one of their courses and enroll in it. It's free of cost. Uh, you don't have to do anything. Uh, you don't have to pay anything. You, you just uh, enroll using your own email and then you can get access to their resources. Okay, so you head over to this, this thing over here, get started with Cisco packet tracer on skills for our platform. 
you will see something that looks uh, something like this okay so i have a resume course link over here for you uh, if you're new this is going to be enroll or something like that join something like that click on this and uh, it may ask you for a username password you can sign up uh, free for a new account okay and once you're uh, through the sign up you should uh, get to a page that looks something like this so you're going to have the getting started with cisco packet tracer in your in progress links uh, I've completed it already, so it's in the completed tab, but for you, it might be somewhere over here in my learning on the networking academy, okay? So just uh, the basic navigation. So you click on this and you arrive at the page, which is this thing over here. So if you click on the menu over here, you can see that you have three modules in this course, download and use Cisco Packet Tracer. So we are going to click on this and this shows us this thing over here. We are going to click on install Cisco Packet Tracer. And there is a lot of material over here. There is a video which tells you how to use it. But if you're watching, if you're watching my video, then you can simply follow along with me. Or if you're comfortable with those, you can do that as well. It's it's the same content. Okay. So if you're a first time in the course, you read through all of this text. But essentially, what it's telling you is that you can go ahead and uh, download the Cisco Packet Tracer from this link over here. So it's skillsforall.com/resources/lab/downloads. Okay. So we click on this and we are going to be taken to the downloads page here you can go ahead and download the cisco packet tracer based on your platform so it can be mac os ubuntu or windows whichever you're on uh, i'm on mac so i'll download the mac os version which is going to be a dmg file and on windows you'll get an installer it doesn't matter which operating system you're on the final software that you get is going to be exactly the same they're all identical so you can use it on whichever platform you are more comfortable with okay so it doesn't matter which platform you're on simply download it run it it's going to install automatically it's fairly straightforward just click next 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 and it should install once it is installed we want to get access to the basic network that we're going to create okay so let me explain what that means we are going to head over back to our uh, course which is getting started with cisco packet tracer we are going to head over to create a cisco packet tracer network module okay so this is the second module you go over here and in this you click on the build a home network again you can read through all the different modules if you want to uh, they're very useful um, they have good material but uh, for now we are going to stick to the actual creation and i'm going to demonstrate what to do with it okay so if you go to the section 2.1.2 this might change in the future but it's the same idea so you have the link over here create a simple network if you click on this it tells you all the stuff that you have to do for this particular exercise it looks very long but it's fairly straightforward and i'm going to walk you through it okay so let's close this and this is the link that you have to click to download the starter file so this create a simple network is going to download a .pka file for you which is a file which is used by the cisco packet tracer software so you've installed the cisco packet tracer you download this file and this is going to be something like this so 2.1.1 dash packet tracer something something simple network dot pka file so it's going to be a pka file it works on windows and mac and linux all the same okay you double click on this file and you will be taken to the packet tracer okay so once you've installed the packet tracer and downloaded the file you simply double click on the file and it will open in the packet tracer which is going to look something like this okay now you may see a pop-up open over here when you start the cisco packet tracer the first time and the reason for that is you have to log in with your skills for all account so if you see a pop-up simply log in using your skills.com account uh, the username password that you uh, input for the uh, platform over here so this platform okay you use the same username and password and it's going to be uh, it's going to allow you to log in okay and you will see an, inter uh, an interface that looks like this i'm going to explain what the interface is in just a minute okay so make sure that uh, you have uh, the setup working and then you can go ahead and start reading these uh, instructions so this is essentially telling you that you're going to build a simple network Three of the devices are already provided to you. So you have the internet. So this little box over here, let's get rid of this. This little box over here is basically simulating the whole internet for you. Okay, And this thing is a web server, which is cisco.serve. So Cisco web server, which can give you some websites that you can watch within this simulator. Okay, So this is your whole world. And the simulator is going to allow you to place multiple things. What is our objective in this course? Our objective is to place a PC a laptop and a cable modem in this scenario over here and then have your pc communicate to the web server 
So we are going to essentially create this whole network. Okay, all the detailed instructions are over here, but I'm going to walk you through them so that you can later on uh, work with them on your own as well. So we have to add some network devices to this workspace. This place over here is called the workspace. We are going to add some devices, the PC, the laptop and cable modem. Okay. So in order to get the devices, you have to go to end devices. So if you come down over here, you see that different options are here. So these are your devices that you can add. Okay. So we are going to click on end devices. So uh, it may not be visible in the video, but if you uh, have the software running on the bottom left, you will see uh, network devices and end devices. Click on the end devices and you will see that the devices have changed. In this, uh, you have end devices, again end devices. So in the lower left, you have end devices. If you click on that, you see PC, laptop, server, and so on and so forth, right? So we've studied already what end devices are. These are the end devices which are available in our uh, packet tracer for us. So we're going to click on a PC and then click here and it's going to essentially place the PC for us in our workspace. So in our world, in the, uh, this world that we've created, we have a PC. We also need a laptop. So you click on the laptop and click over here. And we also need a cable modem. So this is the modem which is going to connect to the internet. Okay, so we have a wireless router. At your home, currently, you probably use the wireless router to connect to the internet directly. But here we are going to place a different device. So our wireless router is going to connect to that device and that device is going to connect to the internet. Okay, there are reasons for that. We'll do that later. Okay, so in networking devices, so you go over here, network devices. In this, you need WAN emulation. So you remember what WAN is? Over here, we have the WAN emulation. And in this, we have a cable modem. So you click on cable modem and you place it over here. Okay. All right. So now we have to basically establish a connection between all of these different devices, right? So at the moment, they're not connected to each other. We have to do, the, do that. But for, before that, we are going to change the display names of the network devices. Okay. For that, simply click on a device and you will see this huge configuration panel. Okay. It's not that complicated. We'll come back to different configurations slowly. Okay. So you go to config and over here is the display name. You change this to, let's say, PC instead of PC0 and close and you will see that the name has changed to PC or alternatively you can simply click on the name over here and then change the name okay two ways to change the name either click on the icon and then change it from the configuration or simply change it using the caption over here okay now adding the physical cabling between the devices the PC will need a copper straight through cable okay so this is the general cable that we are going to use so for that head over to connections here we are going to have the copper straight through cable. It's the black one. Okay, so you click on this and read over here. It says select the copper straight through cable in the device specific selection box and attach to attach it to the fast Ethernet zero interface of the PC. Okay, how do you do that? You click on the PC and you select fast Ethernet zero. Okay, so the wire is now connected to one port of this PC and the other end of the wire is free. We have to attach it to what? The wireless router. You click on the wireless router and it gives you all the options that you have over here. So over here it says attach it to the gigabit ethernet one interface. We don't have that over here, but it's the same thing. You attach it to the ethernet one interface. They're all the same, okay? So attach it and see now that the wire has connected, okay? All right, so similarly, we are going to attach the wireless router over here to the cable modem and cable modem to the internet. To attach the wireless router to the cable modem, we are going to again need a straight, ca uh, straight cable, so copper straight through cable. So click, click. This time attach it to the internet port of the wireless router and attach it to the cable modem. And here we are going to attach it to port 1, which is the cable on which this cable can connect. Okay, if you try to attach it to port 0, it's not going to work anyway because the port does not accept this type of cable. So you attach it to port 1. The information is given over here as well. Okay, now the cable modem has to attach to the internet and this time we're going to use a different cable because the port is now different. So we are going to use the coaxial six, uh, sorry, coaxial seven cable. So that is this guy over here, blue one, coax. You can see the caption at the bottom over here. So you click on this, click on the cable modem, port zero, and then click on the internet. And here you are going to attach it to coaxial seven. Okay, so you do that and now your PC is connected to the wireless router, which is connected to the cable modem, which is connected to the, to the internet and on the internet we have a website called cisco.serv. So now, ideally, we should be able to open up this PC and a browser within this PC. I'll explain what that means in just a minute, but we should be able to click on this PC, open it up and open a browser in this PC and access this website. 
okay so let's try to do that so click on the pc and here you have a tab called desktop so these are the applications in this simulated desktop okay on this pc which is simulated we have a desktop so this is the desktop think of this as your machine's desktop in this we have some icons and one of these is the web browser so you click on this and now you have a web browser running inside this pc which is inside the simulator so this browser cannot access the rest of the internet but it can access everything which is in this simulated internet okay and what is in the simulated internet this cisco.sre okay so just as you use any browser you go over here and you type http colon slash slash cisco.srv okay so this is the website's address you type it and you click go and you get an error it says host name unresolved which means it cannot find the server okay so but we have everything connected what's wrong see now we have to figure out what's wrong in this whole scenario everything is connected everything as you can see is green even though you don't know what green is but at least it suggests to you that all the connections are established but still we cannot access the web server why is that let's try to figure it out okay so this is going to be like a, the theme throughout the course we are going to come back again and again to the fact that everything seems fine but the connection is not working as intended why is that and then we have to figure it out as network administrators so here the situation uh, uh, because you don't have uh, the detailed information right now you cannot solve it but i'm going to give you the solution right now the solution is or let's describe the problem first the problem is that even though your pc is connected to the wireless router the wireless router does not know how to basically talk with the pc because you need two things one you need the wire which is the hardware to establish connection you also need the software to somehow configure itself so that this pc knows who the wireless router is and the wireless router knows how many devices are connected to it and so on and so forth there are a lot of pieces of information that you have to adjust okay and it's very straightforward to actually solve the problem once you know so what's the problem the wireless router does not know how to address or how to target the pc how to send information to the pc and the pc does not know who it should be talking to if it wants to go to the internet right now there is only one connection but there can be multiple connections so you have to tell the pc who it is and who it should talk to when it wants to send packets out when it sends when it wants to send any information out okay it might sound complicated we're going to come back to the theory of this later on but the solution is you go to the pc and you go to config over here and you will see that it says that your gateway is not set over here what is the gateway gateway is the device which you use to connect to anything outside your network say this again gateway is the device that you need if you want to talk to anybody who is outside your network so at the moment this pc is alone in its network we'll add the laptop later on but for now this pc is alone in its network and the cisco.srv is outside our local network local area network so we have to tell the pc that it should talk to the wireless router if it wants to talk to other people okay so i'll do the solution and then we're going to come back to this later on in the theory so how do you solve it you go to config and you set this to dhcp and you set the gateway for ipv6 to automatic as well okay so it that is all that is all you need right if you close this okay so just notice over here this 192.168.0.1 has just appeared it wasn't here before okay you can go back and watch the video again and see that it wasn't here before now it is there you close this now our problem is solved i'll show you i'll prove it to you that the problem is now solved but first let's see what happened the pc did not know who to talk to okay and all we had to do was tell the pc to go ask somebody anybody on the internet who who can give me access to the internet somebody tell me that is exactly what the pc did so this is what this dhcp does we're going to come back to this later on in our theory but what this dhcp means is essentially instead of trying to find the solution yourself so static means i'm going to tell myself who i need to talk to okay dhcp means somebody on the network is going to just tell me i'm going to ask everybody and somebody is going to just tell me and you got the answer over here okay we are going to see how exactly this works but the point is the actual configuration is just a simple click and everything is now going to work okay so let's go back to the desktop again this is just we are trying to set up a network and see how the things work all of this is a lot of theory and it's going to be explained later on in the course but for now we are just trying to establish connectivity okay so we go to the web browser again wait a little while and then type http 
colon slash slash cisco.srv and this time we should ideally get the web page back okay so it takes a couple of clicks sometimes so there you go now we are not getting the error we are getting the web page it's a simple web page but we're still getting it back okay so you can click on a small page and you see a hello world and it's a website that kind of works okay so our pc is now able to communicate to the cisco.srv okay let's do another thing let's also connect the laptop but this time let's not connect the laptop using a wire let's connect it connect it using wireless right because we have wireless route over here but this laptop does not have a wireless card at the moment how do i know so i clicked on this and this is the physical view of the laptop that you can see over here this simulated laptop can can be seen here okay so this thing over here is where your wire is connected so we have a wire card over here wire nick but we don't want a wire one we want a wireless one okay so how do you do that you first turn off the laptop so you cannot remove this card if you don't turn off the laptop so you see this little button over here with the green light at the bottom you click on the button and the laptop is now turned off okay you take the card and you place it outside the laptop and now you have this slot available you go to wpc300n this is your wireless card you drag it over here and you place it here you can see a little antenna over here okay so now your wireless card is installed on the laptop turn your laptop back on and now we can connect uh, using this wireless connectivity with the uh, with the wireless router so this is a very important point here See, the packet tracer is very powerful. It can actually allow you to modify your hardware and basically work with hardware without actually having to buy hardware. So it's a very good uh, software, okay? So again, let's go to config and DHCP is already set over here. Uh, let's go to the desktop and in this we have a PC wireless over here. So click on PC wireless. Here we have the connect tab, you go over here and you should see the wireless router in just a minute over here. So home network is here, you click on this and you click on connect there is no password so it's going to hopefully connect automatically okay so after a little while the link information should appear over here so let's click on this you have successfully connected to the access point so now i am connected okay so let's go ahead and close this let's go to sorry on the desktop back and in the web browser we are going to try to open the website again so http colon slash slash cisco dot srv and uh Remember, we are now accessing the website using the laptop, which is connected, as you can see, using a wireless connectivity. So all these uh, like dashed lines or something like that, these basically denote a uh, wireless connectivity between the laptop and the uh, wireless router. So let's click on go and you can see the website again. OK, so now our laptop is connected and our uh, PC is also connected with the wireless router, which is connected to the cable modem, which is connected through the Internet to our website over here and everything is working fine. Okay. So hopefully you can get this thing to work. One final thing, uh, we are going to go to our PC and here in the command prompt, so this is our command prompt where we can issue some commands. We are actually going to see what name was assigned or what address, what unique address was assigned to our PC when we asked the wireless router to name us. Remember the DHCP? That basically gave us an address. That is why things started working and we're going to take a look at what that name was, okay? So for that, you issue a command called ipconfig slash all okay i'm going to hit enter and then we're going to see what the output is so it's going to be a long output but we're going to take a look at just one part one part of it okay so here you can see a lot of information but here you have the fast ethernet zero connection so this is our cable uh, connection and it is saying that the address that was given to us was 192.168.0.3 and the gateway or the device that we talk to if we want to go to anything outside our network is 192.168.0.1. All of this is going to make a lot more sense when we uh, study this in theory, but for now you have created a, a network in which you have a PC which is assigned an address and it can talk to the whole internet using this gateway. Okay, So make sure that you can see these outputs over here and uh, that should be the end of your first hello world with the packet tracer.